Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rant. Powered by Come On Out, the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomat. I got some ranting to do right now. As you've seen the last couple of days, I've hit on a couple of topics. One topic was attendance. Attendance at the uh, the Liberty Aces game. Attendance at the Lynx Connecticut Sun game. Then I did a a video on tickets and how much they cost to get into the building. I thank you for watching those videos. What do you think I'm going to talk about now? The WNBA TV ratings for game one on Sunday. When they decided in their infinite wisdom, let's compete against the NFL. They want to compete against the brand. With a 3 o'clock game between the Aces and the Liberty and an 8 o'clock or 8.30 game with the Lynx and the Sun. They thought that was a good idea. They really did. I knew it wasn't a good idea, but they thought it made so much sense. And what are they doing tonight as I'm recording after game two? I see that the Liberty now are up 2-0 on the Aces, and the Minnesota Lynx tied it up at one piece. I watched a grand total of 19 seconds of the Liberty game, basically the last 19 seconds, which took about 10 minutes. I didn't see any of the Lynx game against the Sun. Like I told you, I don't really care. I am going to keep up with to see what the score is, to see if maybe it's worth watching the last two minutes of the game. But I'm not going to set my clock. I was watching the Padres and and the Atlanta Braves in the Major League Baseball playoffs, which happened to be on the real ESPN. Not the little sister... We were playing playbacks and recorded games and whatever. ESPN2. It might as well be ESPN the Ocho. And we get some, what was it called? Uh, What was that movie called? With, uh, God damn, why is it slipping my brain right now? God almighty, I'm dying now. What is that stupid movie called? With Sandler and uh, Vince Vaughn, dodgeball, (laughs) dodgeball, ESPN, the Ocho. Yeah, it was Ben Ben Stiller. Yeah, Ben Stiller. Yeah, and Vince Vaughn. So let's talk about these ratings, and let's explain what it means when people talk about ratings. There will be people that will sit here and tell you, oh, the ratings have gone up since last year in the playoffs. Okay, great, nice. But that you've been pitched a story to tell you that the ratings would do just fine without Caitlin Clark. You were lied to again. You keep getting lied to. The WNBA must be the worst at marketing its product because they can't even keep a lie. They'd be better off not releasing the ratings like the Olympics did for these same players who no one cares about. Because, in fact, if you look at the two game, the two teams, the Aces and the Liberty have six Olympians on the team. The Sun and Lynx have two. So eight of the 12 players on the Olympic team are still playing. The others that are not playing are Griner, Tarasi, Jewel Lloyd. That's three... There's one more. Oh, and Ka Copper. There's your four. Caitlin Clark drew 2.5 million on average in game two against the Connecticut Sun on a Wednesday on cable. ESPN. I think it was ESPN. There was a peak of 3.4 million. The game that followed was the Lynx against whoever the hell they played. I don't even remember. It doesn't really matter. What's the Mercury? The Phoenix Mercury. They played them. They were the beneficiary of people 
that did not turn the television off after the Indiana fever game ended. But that number chopped in half from 2.5 to 1.2. That's a great, great thing for those two teams. And the peak, I think, dropped from 3.4 to 2.1, which means it probably was the first 10 minutes of the game before people turned it off. All that said, you decided to go against the NFL. Last Sunday, a week ago Sunday, Caitlin Clark went against the NFL, and she drew 1.8 million viewers. The other three games combined did not draw 1.3 million viewers. They combined drew 500 plus less thousand than Caitlin Clark drew by herself. Now, the ratings have come out, and you've probably seen them seen them already on other podcasts because I know there have been a few that have already been published, and it's out there. But I like to give my little spin on things because I like to give it how I see it. And typically in a rant format and a more direct in-your-face kind of way. Because that's just who I am. So the Liberty and Aces, a rematch of the finals last year, while playing in front of 4,000 empty chairs, drew 929,000 viewers. It didn't draw 1.5. It didn't draw 1.4. It didn't draw 1.3. It didn't draw 1.2, 1.1, or even 1 million viewers on a Sunday afternoon. It drew 929,000 viewers for a rematch of the WNBA Finals in the semis. The WNBA right now is pissing down its own leg. Because what's happening is they're seeing that their best possible series which is now 2-0 in favor of the Liberty, is probably going to end, if not in game three, probably by game four. The New York Liberty is just a better team than the Las Vegas Aces this year. It's just that simple. It's that simple for a variety of reasons, including one being that when you try to make someone such a focal point of your offense, other people may not play as well. That's what's happened this year with the Aces. The Aces fell by seven games from last season to this season. And what you have is you have Asia Wilson being force-fed the ball where she has to get as many shots as humanly possible and be the focal point of the offense, which is why her numbers blew up this year from 22 and 10 to 27 and 12. But they got worse as a team. Now, you have that series going on in the semis, which means – The Liberty is probably going to play. Obviously, they're going to play the winner of the the Minnesota Lynx Connecticut Sun Series. My guess is they're probably going to end up playing, and I hate to say it, the Connecticut Sun. This is going back to Connecticut 1-1. Connecticut pulled off the win in game one. They lost game two, but they're going back home, and they're a good home team. They're a good team. They they just are a good team. I really thought the Minnesota Lynx would be, would probably would would get. I thought that the Lynx could win the championship, but there's a certain toughness about Connecticut that the Lynx just don't have. And I, I think by the scoring, the, by the score amount, these are lower scoring games than Minnesota would probably wants to play because they expect to score more points. Now they do have one of the best defenses in basketball in WNBA, but they also score more. They're not some, like, 78-point-per-game team, I don't think. Let me check. Let me just verify that because I'm pretty sure that they're – and if I'm wrong, then I'm wrong. The Lynx average 82 points per game, give up 75.6. The best defense in the league is is the Sun, 73.6. You know, the Lynx guy held a 70 points in game one. They got – and then this time they held the – they held the Sun to 70 points. They scored 77. So this is a lower scoring game. I don't think that bodes well for um, for the Lynx, it, to be quite frank. I don't think it's going to be helpful to them to have that low, a low scoring type of game. But let's talk about this. 929,000. The Lynx drew 1.2 million after Caitlin Clark played. 
And I'll go back to this when I say, look, I'm not expecting the WNBA to let Caitlin Clark win. By no means should you do anything to let her win. I just thought that the way the game was, the game was officiated was so ungodly one-sided that realistically she had no chance to win if you're not going to call clear flagrant fouls. And I think a lot of the a lot of the viewership that you could have potentially had cross over and continue are those Caitlin Clark fans that are so loyal to Caitlin Clark that they were so offended by the fact that the WNBA, WNBA is showing, showing such a complete bias towards Clark's competitors that it's not it's it's just not a league they want to watch. I'll be real, it's a league that I don't want to watch because I thought I thought it was just so bad. The refereeing was so bad. And it made it turns you off to what you want to see clean, fair basketball. So 929 was the number. Now that beat the best game last year that they had in the finals. I expected it to. My question was, would they hit 1.5 million people? And the answer is no, they weren't close. They were a third off of that number. They weren't close. They didn't hit the number that the Lynx hit a week ago after playing when, when they played after the fever. So, and this game that they played was on ABC. They played on free TV on Sunday. They didn't play on ESPN. They played on ABC. So you're playing a game on free television and you couldn't draw a million on a, at three o'clock in the afternoon on a Sunday. Let's put, let's paint this picture for you. You want to know what time the national championship for the WNBA was? It was at three o'clock on a Sunday. Now they didn't have the NFL to compete with, but they drew 18.6 million people. You drew 929,000. Like, bro, this is so bad. And that doesn't get you into the next game at 8 o'clock. Again, that, that was going against, I think, the Ravens and the Bills. They drew 654,000 with the Lynx and the Sun. 600, 654,000. They drew 1.583 million over two games. And Caitlin Clark's one game last Sunday drew one. Point eight million. Her second game drew two point five million. I had to burst your bubble, the WNBA, and people who have been online and trying to try to somehow spin this into a positive story. There is nothing positive about seeing your ratings drop by more than 50% once Caitlin Clark exited the playoffs, which we told you was going to happen. We told you. Now, do I think that the Liberty and Aces could draw a million in a game? I don't know what they drew tonight, but it was on ESPN2, not ESPN, not ABC. So I'm interested to see those numbers. Could they be better? I don't know. You're going against Major League Baseball and the playoffs. I don't know about you, but most people still prefer Major League Baseball playoffs over WNBA playoffs. Now they're completely demographics of people. But the baseball playoffs were on ESPN, and they were also on ABC earlier today. This was on ESPN2. You got demoted to ESPN2. Because ESPN knows that your programming and product stinks and it's not going to draw. Now, might have ha might it have? I don't know. We'll see tomorrow. Maybe I'll be surprised. Maybe I'll be shocked. The game finished, I think it was 88-84. Maybe I'll be shocked. It won't hit 1.5 million. I, I have no – if that happens, I'll be flabbergasted. But if you didn't hit 900 you, – if you couldn't hit a million – on Sunday, on free television. I don't see how in the world they can expect to do much better than that on ESPN2. And now you have the 2-0 series. And the WNBA right now is sitting here looking at a potential New York Liberty, Connecticut Sun, WNBA finals potentially. Or, I mean, it could be Liberty versus Lynx. It doesn't really matter. The Lynx can't sell cake to a fat kid. 
They couldn't just give a hot dog to Joey Chestnut. You 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 can't make this type of shit up. Damn, I cursed. My bad. I'm not trying to. I'm trying to avoid cursing. I'm trying to avoid the cursing component. But you can't make this up. The attendance at the Fever. I'm sorry, at, at the Liberty Aces game, fourteen thousand three twenty one. They still had almost four thousand empty seats. The attendance at the Connecticut Sun Minnesota Lynx game. 8,796. That is still less than their regular season average. And it costs $23 to walk in the building. $23. $35 in New York. I, I need to check something out before I continue. Because I want to take a look and see what the what the Las Vegas Aces tickets are going for right now. <clears throat> I'm curious. First of all, they're not moving it to the T-Mobile. They're playing in their Michelob Ultra Arena closet at the um, Mandalay Bay, which seats 10,000 people, 12,000 people, whatever it is. Okay, so you can get a ticket right now on Ticketmaster. <laughs> God. <laughs> you can get a ticket right now on Ticketmaster for $26 to get into the Aces game on Friday against the Liberty. 26 bucks. That's upper deck. Let's take a look at the lower. Let's, let's take a look at the lower deck. Okay, 118. Uh, mm, mm, 74 lower deck. Seventy-four, seventy, seventy-four, sixty-two dollars, sixty-eight. You can get into the upper into the lower level for sixty-two dollars. <throat> I don't know about y'all, but sixty-two dollars, sixty-two dollars lower level to the Aces Liberty in Vegas on Friday. Could be the Aces' last game of the season if they lose. And that's not the actual – I think they're, the main ticket seller is Access Tickets. That's Ticketmaster. Let's take a look at Access. Las Vegas Aces. Yeah, this is it right here. Get tickets. I'm sure there's they claim to be sold out for the season, so I shouldn't see any. I should not see anything available, right? Right? That would be correct. Uh, I don't know what the heck is what here. This is weird. Um, forty-five bucks upper deck. Is this is this face value? Now, these are all resales, so they're trying to make profit on this, which they're not going to make. Um, let's see here. Let's see, $45 over here. That's resale. Their building might be sold out. It might actually be 40 That's one ticket. They sure have still got a lot of tickets available, for, you know, considering their season could end. <clears throat> so it's a little bit more here on Access. People will be better off going to Ticketmaster. <laughs> It's a bit more. Um, it looks like the, it looks like their building is sold out. Well, so good for them. They sold out their Band-Aid box, which makes me ask, why aren't they moving into the T-Mobile? Because they didn't think, because they didn't really believe they could sell the T-Mobile out. That's probably why. Las Vegas Aces. This is I'm going over to Vivid Seats right now. On Vivid Seats, cheapest ticket, twenty-one bucks. Twenty-one bucks to get in the building. Look, they sold out their arena. It seems like they sold out the arena, so I'll give them that. They sold out the arena, small arena. It's like 10, 12,000, if that. I don't, even think I don't even know if it sees 12. But you can walk in for $21 on the resale market, and I guarantee you the main price, the, the, the face value for these tickets is not $21. Guaranteed their face value is not 21 bucks. It has to be more than that. Has to be more. And what about the Connecticut Sun? 
I do this live right with you. Why not? Let's do it live. Why the hell not? Single game tickets. So they run their stuff through Ticketmaster. This is their ticket seller. They got a lot of tickets available. I mean, you can walk in the building for $48. These are all oh, the standard ticket. Here we go. The standard price ticket is $48.20 in section 111. And I guess that's the upper deck for that arena. And it's a small arena, so who cares? But, yeah, they have standard seats available still. I'm looking at it right here. You don't believe me? Let me share it with you. This is the WNBA playoffs, right? See that right there? It says standard ticket. That is that is face value. Standard ticket, face value. Standard ticket, official platinum. That's face value, $49. Verified resale, standard. It's $56 sit side court. What's the they got a lot of standard tickets available? Look at this. Look at look at this. This is crazy. This isn't resale. This is bananas how many tickets they have left. 131. Let's see what the what's the what's the lowest price, lower level? 82 bucks. Yeah, who the heck would price their tickets at 82.70? That's that's standard. Their building's not sold out. Needless to say, your attendance has dropped by more than 50%. By, I mean, my God, 20, a third, nearly a third of what the Caitlin Clark attendance was in game two. A third. And y'all are going to sit here and tell us that people are watching your product? Oh, my word. Even Fox, even Fox News is talking about this crap. Even Fox News is talking about this. You know how bad it, I mean, how bad it has to be when you have Fox talking about how the, 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 the attendance went to freaking hell? I mean, you got... They're trying so hard. Here we go. Here's, here's one report reporter saying WNBA ratings were expected to drop after Caitlin Clark's playoff exit. Da, 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 da. Ah, whatever. That's nothing. But they're going to sit here and say that the numbers have soared and all that other crap. Fact of the matter is their numbers fell in the toilet after Caitlin Clark left. Here's Fox News. WNBA playoffs playoff ratings plummet. After Caitlin Clark goes home, plummet. We told you, we told you, we told you. No one cares. You think people care? You get excited about 929,000 viewers. New York City alone has 20, Metro New York has 23 million people. And you could only get not you didn't get I guarantee that 929 is not majority in New York. It's just people around the country. You couldn't get people in your own city to pay for a ticket to watch this dreck. I'm only smiling because I knew I was right. Now I might be wrong tomorrow. I might find out that they shocked the world and they did 1.5 million on ESPN too. I doubt it. I doubt it. If I'm wrong, I will make a video saying I was wrong. God, please don't let me be wrong. <laughs> Anyhow, that's all I got for tonight. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Keep subscribing. If you haven't, make sure you subscribe, like, follow, share, ring that bell, comment. Appreciate y'all. Come on now.